Hi everybody, welcome, welcome. I hope you had a wonderful week building some dashboards with Dash Plotly. In this tutorial, I want to show you um, how to build a dashboard that could potentially attract uh, volunteers and funders to an organization. So um, this dashboard is a formal submission to Sunny Street um, Database for Social Good. And this initiative is to get data experts like data visualization experts like like you and I to turn in and build a dashboard for Sunny Street so they can get more uh, donations and more volunteer more people to volunteer in their in their um, activity centers and in their programs so um, I'm going to teach you today all about that if you want to go into the code and um, download it for yourself. Just go here to the Jupyter file or the Python file. You can just copy paste everything and you can run it on your computer and it would work. This is where I have it. Um, I'm also going to go over in the second part, I'm going to go over this dashboard that David, one of my YouTube subscribers, created. It's a really cool um, short dashboard of, with a sentiment analysis of all the journal entries that the staff did in each activity center. You can see individual ones or you can see the sum of them. So really, really cool dashboard um, with very short codes. So it's uh, a very helpful um, um, uh, dashboard. Thank you for creating this, David. Okay, so how do we create, what do you want to think about or what do you want to um, make sure you keep in mind when you build a dashboard for volunteers or for potential funders? Let's start with volunteers. When you're building a dashboard for volunteers, you want to build graphs that help the potential volunteers understand how to volunteer, where to volunteer, what time to volunteer, in what capacity, and how their volunteer time and their volunteer services would have an impact on the organization or their or the community where they are volunteering. So I tried to answer some of these questions with these two maps. These are scatter map boxes. And let's start with this first one. So in this first one, you can see is the color breakdown of patient conversations or medical consultations or substance abuse um, consultations that were given, that were provided to communities in, in uh, this is Australia, right? Around the eastern part of Australia. So the red ones are the higher number of substance abuse consultations and the blue ones are the lower amount. And the size of the bubble is, re, um, uh, is related or cor uh, correlated to, um, to the amount of, of minutes of service provided. So this is the biggest activity center with the most amount of minutes. And one of the smaller ones is this one with um, 1,700 minutes over the last two years of service provided to this community. Now, why is this helpful for volunteers? Because volunteers might go and say, you know what, I'm, I'm a doctor or I'm a nurse or a clinician and I want to provide um, my services, but I don't have a lot of experience with substance abuse. So I'm going to click on substance abuse and then I'll go to maybe a, a community that is very like light blue um, because I don't know if I want to provide a lot of um, a substance abuse consultation. That's not my forte, right? Or maybe I'm just starting out. So I, I don't want to be inundated with so many substance abuse questions. So this might be a good place. On the other hand, a doctor or a nurse or a clinician might say, I'm, I have a lot, many years of experience and I want to help out where they really need my, my experience and my, my advice. So then they'll click on medical consultations or maybe patient conversations. And then they'll go to places that are either dark red, light red, or, or, or purple. So you see here, this is a big one, obviously. And then there is purple right here. This is a length of minutes, uh, 7,000, and uh, it's called The Shack. And there's, there's 700 patient, co patient conversations there over the last two years or so. So, And this is a purple, so it's darker than, than the blue, and just means it has more conversations there. So me, as an experienced 
clinician, I will go for either that place or or the Maroki uh, Neighborhood Center, or maybe I will go here in Brisbane, the Wesley Mission Clinic, because it has a lot more patient conversations. So this is good for a volunteer because it really allows them to understand where is the best place to um, to volunteer based on their experience and the type of conversations they're going to have. Now, if you look at this map right here, you can see that it's br broken down by shift time. So if I'm a, a clinician and I want to volunteer my time, but I don't have time um, during the afternoon, I only have time at night, then I can either click on this, or sorry, I can click on the other ones and only leave the night ones here. And then I know that I would volunteer if I'm close to any of these two centers because they have knife shifts only. Now, if I click on afternoon because I can only do afternoon, then I know that I can go into any one of these centers because they, they provide, they need volunteers for afternoon shifts, right? So this is also good because you're allowing the volunteer to better understand um, what time of the day they can, to, to choose an activity center based on their availability. Obviously, there's many more things you can do and many more maps. So I encourage you to build out these uh, these dashboards and uh, additional maps and additional uh, graphs and turn it into Sunny Street, turn it into um, a database for social good. You have until September 26 um, and send them to me. I'd love to see them. If you send them to me, I'll try to highlight them on, on YouTube as well. All right, let's go to funders. So when you build a dashboard for funders, you want to allow the funders, potential funders, to understand what their how how their contribution would have an impact on the organization or on the community that the organization serves. So in this case, we have um, let's start with the bottom histogram. In this case, we have um, uh, the x-axis can be average shift time or sum of shifts. Um, sorry, the y-axis. We'll take the average shift time here, and you see it's, we have 19 activity centers, and then the average shift time in minutes over the last two years. So the Shack Friday is about an hour average uh, shift time, and Wesley Mission Clinic is about an hour, almost two hours of average shift time. Now what's cool is that the potential funder can say, okay, if I donate uh, if there's no money donated, it's the average shift time, which is 129 for all of the activity centers. But if I donate $10,000, I can increase the average shift time for the whole organization to 160 minutes. And if I donate $50,000, I can increase the average shift time to double, to 250 minutes across the board for all of the organization, for all of the activity centers. Now, this is, this is a made-up assumption. I didn't talk to Sunny Street managers and executive directors, so I don't know this is true, but this can easily be changed to different numbers as well. But what's cool is that the potential donor can see how their money can have an impact across the organization. Now, another option is to choose some of shifts, which will um, which will go um, which will create this drop down, and in this drop down they can choose any any. Um, um, activity center they want and see how their money will increase the amount of shift, the amount of time of service provided to that community. So in Gimpy, if there's no donation, um, there's a, a total of 1,700 minutes that were provided in, in the last year or two of service. But if I donate $25,000 or let's say $50,000, this will go up to um, uh, six to almost seven thousand minutes. So this is really informative because the this is telling the funder if I donate fifty thousand dollars, the community of Gimpy will get triple the amount or five thousand more minutes of service uh, within it, within that activity center. And same thing if I want to choose a different clinic. Uh, let me choose. Um, um, Harvey, no, let's choose a different one. Sunco Stadium, set free trial, one before that. Let's do the Red Cross Night Cafe. So with no donation, it's only, it's about 9,000, 8,000 minutes. But if I provide a 25,000 donation in the next year, they will be able to provide 16 more hours of, not 16, but eight, eight more hours of, of services, which can be very impactful 
on the community within the Red Cross Night Cafe. Okay, so um, I am going to do, I did not turn in this this um, da dashboard yet. I'm gonna turn it in today or tomorrow and I'm, I want to do the same thing here. I'm gonna create um, um, this drop down and radio buttons here so the potential donor can know how their money can decrease or lower the amount of patients turned away by activity uh, center or by region. So they'll be able to click on a region and click on the amount of money and see how many less patients will be turned away because of their donation. So I'm gonna try and create that this week, but definitely feel free to, to create this on, on your own to build this. I'm going to, again, the Python or Jupyter file, um, download this and just create this part right here on top. Uh, I'll post a solution on my GitHub um, later this week so you have it as well. Okay, uh, the, the next um, dashboard that I want to show you is this really cool dashboard that David created. Um, it's a sentiment analysis. So this is a sum of the um, uh, sentiment analysis over the last, uh, from 2020 to 2021. And this is the same thing, but broken down by months, right? So he's just taking, if you go into his GitHub here, I'm going to put this GitHub under the video. He's just taking the, the uh, uh, data and he's just taking the journal entries, where is the journal entries right here? Journal entries right here. And then he's just classifying them with, with spacey. Spacey is this uh, right here. It's a, it's a Python library. And with just like 10 lines of code here, he was creating a, a, a sentiment analysis over all that, those uh, journal entries text. So really short code and with that code he's creating all of this and you can see um, that sentiment analysis is from minus one to one so the negative um, comments or entries are minus one the positive one are ones so then you can just see that in 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 like the months of november in 2000 what is this 2020 there was it's like 12 point something there was many many positive remarks a lot more than negative ones the month of august for 2019 you had a lot of negative remarks and some positive, but but not too many. So it's just a little bit above zero. The sentiment analysis was pretty neutral for the month of August. And the same thing with all these these years. This is just a line chart. Now, what's cool about this is Davis dashboard is that you can click on the year and see a breakdown of the sentiment analysis. If I choose 2020, I can see a breakdown now. All the left is all the positive one. On the right is all the negative one. And it goes from one all the way to zero point something. Anything above zero is positive. And then you can see how accurate the analysis is or the sentiment analysis is compared to the comments. And again, this is with just like 10 lines of code. This is really, really impressive. Uh, also, I learned how to do this from, from David. So 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 thank you for doing this david really appreciate it it's a really nice dashboard uh, david submitted this to to sunny street so i hope you'll get a chance to also submit this to 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 sunny street or or data viz uh, this is the uh, instructions how to do that um i think you will you will really enjoy the process you still have five days or four days to do that you really enjoy the process it's gonna it's for a good cause it's gonna help uh this great organization um, support the community's most vulnerable people in Australia. It's going to have good practice for your data um, uh, analysis and dashboard building skills. So go ahead and do it. Um, you will also get a chance to talk about your dashboard. That's what's so great about it. After you submit, you will have a chance to, on October 1st, to be invited to a live event virtually where you can highlight your dashboard and everything that you built to the public. So good luck. Um, uh, ask me on YouTube below the video if you have any questions. Um, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you, every week you get a notification of a new video coming out. Uh, and don't forget to uh, join my Patreon so you can, so you can help um, um, support me and see uh, other um, cool videos along your Dash Plotly uh, learning journey. And always remember we're better together so help each other out. Have a good day. Bye.